Joe Biden's brain is cooked. It's a little bit soupy. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit mildewy. There's a bit of mold there. Um, this is a fact. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There, there are people who are like, yeah, it's just a stutter. Come on, man. C don't. Come on. Jesus. It's not, it's, it's not like I don't think that Donald Trump, Trump's brain is also itself very pudding-esque, you know? I also believe that it's, it's, it's pudding-like. I'm not denying that. It's just that, one, you know, that doesn't take away from the Biden thing. And two, Donald Trump still has the energy to deliver statements, incoherent or otherwise, whereas Biden kind of doesn't, you know, seem like he can. And between that and the way things are going right now, I kind of want to take a look at Kamala Harris. Like, what's up with her, you know? I, like, what? We need to see if she could win. Like, I make a lot of jokes at the expense of Kamala Harris, and she deserves it. But we need to take a look at the way she speaks. And be... morbidly realistic about it. If Joe Biden died or had to drop out, could she beat Donald Trump? So let's look. I'm glad you asked. Hold on, this is uh, this is a edited version. Here we go. Please I think this is the seat. full. Please have a seat. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Forbes. So Dr. Chico and I were talking in Forbes? The back about. Um... Did, did did Forbes record their version of this press conference with like a Game Boy Advance camera attachment? What, what? Why? Okay. What? As long as the audio is fine. Last time I saw you was during the holidays. You came to my house. Yeah. <laughs> talking about this, and about what we're going to do to follow through on our commitments to the community, to each other, and to our country, right? Because the work of community work, and in particular violence intervention, is about investing in the community, understanding our capacity, understanding the greatness. Oh, this is gonna be so bad. Why does she always sound so f***ing drunk? I don't know, but she does. She talks like how customer service workers talk to customers. Yeah, she like, she, she sounds really disingenuous, but in a different way than Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton sounded like, um, I don't know, a sneering coastal elite uh, who, who looked down on you because you could never understand what she had to do to get there. And Kamala Harris always sounds like a preschool teacher talking to the problem child, you know? Yeah, in this like patronizing maternal way. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. There's like a different vibe. And she does always sound drunk. And then being motivated with that knowledge to do what we can to reduce harm, but not for the sake only of reducing harm, but in investing in the potential and the greatness. That is the essence of this work. I want to thank the governor of Maryland, yes. Governor Moore. Oh my God, Forbes, are you kidding me? Come on. Wes Moore and I have had so many conversations about this work, and I know he's going to replicate this in a big old way in Maryland and, and put everybody to shame in terms of showing what states can do when you have... Analog horror audio? No kidding. I'm just going to go back to the, cl the clipped video. I, I, this is not the first time, by the way, that Forbes in particular has had weirdly bad audio and visuals. I, I, whatever. We'll just go to the clip. Uh, whatever. Um, listen... I have been privileged and proud uh -huh. to serve as Vice President of the United States with Joe Biden as President of the United States. And what I saw of that report last night, I believe is, as a former prosecutor, um, the comments that were made by that prosecutor, gratuitous, inaccurate, and inappropriate. October 7th, Okay, we talked about this before, but um, somebody in chat pointed out that, or was it me? I don't remember. Somebody, some esteemed individual suggested that a lot of her weird patronizing kindergarten teacher vibe might come from the fact that she's overcorrecting and trying to sound as calm as possible because she knows that as a black woman, any like 
spicy behavior from her would be instantly interpreted as like they would run off with it, you know? And I don't know whether or not that's actually the motivation. All I know is that she's overcorrected so f***ing hard, <laughs> you know? If that is the motivation. Israel experienced a horrific attack. And I will tell you, we got the calls, the president and myself, in the hours after that occurred. It was an intense moment for the Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America. And I was in almost every meeting with the President in the hours and days that followed. Addressing the press to the claim that Joe Biden is senile, I disagree. Uh, he leapt to the call when asked to aid and abet Israel in its genocide. I'll have you know, no senile president could, uh, you know, an ally and, 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 and supply uh, you know, a genociding nation that readily, I'll tell you. That's which, what she's saying, by the way. Not even a joke. Countless hours with the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State. Not even a joke. The heads of our intelligence community. And the president was in front of and on top of it all. Asking questions and requiring that America's military and intelligence community and diplomatic community would figure out and know how many people were dead. How many are Americans? How many hostages? Is the situation stable? He was in front of it all, coordinating and directing. Man, if, if I was put in a position where I was the VP and I had to, I had to defend, um, Joe Biden over accusations of senility, and I was going to defend him no matter what, I would not sound even remotely like this. Leaders who are in charge of America's national security, not to mention our allies around the globe. For days, and up until now, months. So the way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized, what would you have said? Well, leaving aside the fact that she's just completely without charisma, like she can't deliver a tone or hold on a point or like uh, there's no coherent flow or energy to the way she speaks. So leave, leaving aside all of that, you know, um, the this like pathetic, uh, well, he was rising to the call when he did what? Like be jokey with it, right? The best thing, the best thing that you can do, like it. it so the accusation is that Joe Biden is senile or 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 like a dawdling old man. The, he's obviously very old. Why not do what Reagan did? Remember, we looked at the clip from Reagan the other day where uh, Reagan was old and himself senile, and he was like, "I heard age being brought up as a. Uh, I, I I'll have it not discussed any further. I do not want my opponents." smeared for his youth and inexperience, you know, like he made a joke that ended the conversation right there. Like, why not treat it with a little bit of levity? Like, yeah, Joe's old, but he's as sharp as a sharp as a whip, you know, like what do you like uh, just a little bit of of. um, I don't know, just <laughs> sharp as a whip, like a whip crack, you know, I, I, I like any levity. But this, like, super serious, Joe Biden rose to the call when October 7th happened. He asked how many people are dead. Like, what are you, who are you convincing with that? You know? Could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated. Gratuitous. And so I will say that when it comes to the role and responsibility of a prosecutor in a situation like that, we should expect that there would be a higher level of integrity. Yeah, Yandrius, I don't want to jump to the accusation that she's drunk because it's kind of lazy and easy, but it, she literally does. If she's not drunk, she acts drunk by default. Like, she just has this weird swaying cadence that, you know, it, it's, it's wild. She, she does it all the time, too. It's not like it's just like this interview. It's consistent. The, need I bring out the classic? Audio warning. Look at my face! Oh my god, I love it! Oh, wow. Look at the bus! Wheels on the bus! Oh, round and round. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> 
it, it's like default behavior for her. I don't know. That clip is so funny. Joker mode? Yeah. Keith Ledger's Kamala Harris. If she isn't constantly drunk, actually, I have no idea what's going on with her. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. If something happens to Joe Biden, or if he, I don't know, collapses into dust or something, I, I mean, I want her to win over Trump. It's just like, man, grim. Bleak. Would you prefer a more abrasive Kamala? Wasn't she more abrasive back during the 2020 primaries? I remember Kamala Harris sounding a lot better back then. Not to say she was like my favorite candidate, but I remember her being a lot more, you know, hold on. And I will say also that that in this campaign, we've also heard, and I'm going to now direct this at Vice President Biden. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful. Notice how much more sincere she comes across while talking here? She's able to carry a tone a lot better. She's able to, um, like, like, she just sounds more normal. She's speaking faster, and she's able to, like, modulate her tone to inflect things she's saying with emotion, which is a normal thing people do when they talk. To hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So I will tell you that on this subject, it cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. She, a, like you, you, so everyone agrees here. She sounds infinitely better, um, far more human, uh, uh, far more engaged. Like the, the point she, like this is a really good line, you know, like the, like the, the, the point that she is making here, the way she's delivering it, all of it, it, it was very, very well delivered. There's a reason she was made VP, right? Like the, obviously part of it was because of the perceived charisma here, you know? Attorney General of California, I was very proud to put in place a, a requirement that all my special agents would wear body cameras and keep those cameras on. Senator Harris, thank you. Vice President Biden, you have been invoked. We are going to give you a chance to respond. Vice President Biden. Also, not to, not to get conspiratorial, but it is kind of crazy how different Biden looked just four years ago. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I'm not one of those like they replaced him with a clone types of people because he's definitely just had facelifts. If you if you've wondered why Biden looks different, it's because he's had facelifts. Uh, that's it. Like that. That is the reason why he looks different. Um, he probably had a facelift before this, too. And the facelifts that he had more recently have just had less attractive results, I guess, or less. Um, they've 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 not looked as good. You know, it can happen. He's mewing. He's mewing right now. He's he's practicing his jaw. It's a mischaracterization of my position across the board. I did not praise racist. That is not true. Number one. Number two, if we want to have this campaign litigated on who supports civil rights and whether I did or not, I'm happy to do that. I was so notice how the way he's speaking right here, you can tell that he has a speech impediment that he's working through. This is also a very stressful point to respond to. So it makes sense that the stutter would come out um, and be a lot more pronounced here. The problems that he has with speaking right now are not the stutter. It's the slurring. It's possible that the slurring and the memory, of course, it's possible the slurring is uh, also a result of the facelifts like, you know, Botox or whatever. But a lot of it is probably also an age thing. I was a public defender. I didn't become a prosecutor. I came out and I left a good law firm to become a public defender. When in fact, when in fact, when in fact my city was in flames because of the, the uh, assassination of Dr. King. Number one. Now, number two, as the U.S., as, excuse me, as the uh, 
uh, Vice President of the United States. I work with a man who, in fact, we worked very hard to see to it. We dealt with these I worked with black man issues in a major, major way. The fact is that in terms of busing, the busing, I never you would have been able to go to school the same exact way because it was a local decision made by your city council. That's fine. That's one of the things I argued for, that we should not be we should be breaking down these lines. But so the bottom line here is, look, everything I've done in my career, I ran because of civil rights. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include what's busing. After the Civil Rights Act was passed and schools were desegregated across the nation, one of the problems desegregation faced, one of many, was that people generally go to schools that are in their district. But because of redlining and the historical practice of forcing black people into poorer neighborhoods and allowing white people to buy houses in richer neighborhoods, even if you desegregate a school, if it's a school that's in an all white area, it's still going to be all white students and likewise with schools that are in all black areas so this was this was a big talking point back in the day that of forced busing basically policies were put in place to forcibly desegregate the schools and diversify them by having some white students bus over to majority black schools and majority black neighborhoods and vice versa with some black students being bused over to majority white schools in majority white areas as you can imagine racists fucking hated this um this is part of that nixon or the the uh the 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 advice or the person from nixon's administration who was saying like you couldn't say the n-word anymore after the civil rights act got passed so you had to abstract it by talking about stuff like forced busing exactly lee atwater thank you i was thinking goldwater not lee atwater yeah 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 yeah, my father had a story from when he was bused back then. A person threw a brick into the bus and hit a little girl in the head. Yeah, no, no, there was a ton of violence. I mean, again, like the the they literally the little the little rock nine, they literally had to um bring in paratroopers to defend these black girls who were sent into a majority white school. Like this was this was the culture war back in the day, basically white racists who wanted to kill black people for entering their neighborhoods um and thank god uh you know a a a president who was willing to send in troops you know eisenhower for all of his faults willing to send in troops to protect them little rock nine happened before busing yeah i know but they're part of the same broader desegregation thing not just only african-americans paratroopers where they jump from paratroopers don't always deploy via jumping it's just they are they were part of that regiment uh, it was the something something airborne. Which regiment was it? Was it the 101st? Somebody in chat said 101st. It was the 101st? Yeah. Hold on. This is from the uh, 101 Airborne Division Facebook page? Is that official? Wait, this might be from an official documentary. Okay, we're never clicking a Facebook link from Google searching ever again. Jesus Christ. All right, never mind. We're moving on. Facebook is terrible. Yeah, I don't even know how terrible it is because I don't use it. So I don't like I just I go on there and I'm just confronted with uh, whatever. But the LGBT community. But they, uh, Vice President Biden, do you agree today? Do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America? Then? No, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I oppose. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the, the second class to integrate Berkeley, but, California. Man, isn't it crazy how much worse everything has gotten? This was this seems like an actual sincere disagreement too. This doesn't even sound like some kind of um like prepared like nonsense talking point shit. It seems like she actually is kind of mad about this and and, and wanted to challenge him on it, you know? They both seem fine here, yeah, and, it, and four years later, like, they're both charisma black holes. Public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. That's why we need to pass the Equality Act. That's why we need to pass the ERA, because that's there right. are moments 
in history where states fail to preserve the civil rights of all people. I have people. supported the okay, ERA. For- yeah, that's true. Uh, Kamala Harris is completely correct, by the way. Biden was against busing. If you're against federally mandated busing or federally mandated any kind of civil rights thing, then you're against that civil rights thing. It's the, it's the equivalent of saying like, you know, I wouldn't want the Civil Rights Act passed at a federal level. I think it should be passed at a state level, a position only held by people who don't want it passed anywhere. Um, she was she was completely right. What is busing? We just went over this. From the very beginning, seconds. when Vice I ran President Biden, problem. thirty seconds because I want to bring you know, other people into this. I supported the ERA from the very beginning. I'm the guy that extended the Voting Rights Act for twenty five years. We got to the place where we got ninety eight out of ninety eight votes in the United States Senate doing it. I've also argued very strongly that we, in fact, deal with the notion of denying people access to the ballot box. I agree that everybody, once they, in fact, they should, anyway, my time's up. I'm sorry. Thank you, Vice President. Sure, let's bring up shit 50 years ago. Um, I, I think that for the most part, Joe Biden is probably like old man racist. I think for the most part, he's kind of shifted with the times. Does that make sense? I think that like, it would be pretty disingenuous to look at Joe Biden and think like, oh yeah, he is still mentally like in the civil rights era. He's like anti all that stuff. And then you look at like everything since then. Uh, I think it's legitimate to criticize him on it, mind you, but I think it's also kind of delusional to suggest that nothing has gone on in his head since then. Still good to criticize, you know, just it's a dynamic, you know? Yeah, well, it's a skill issue. Simply try not being retarded 50 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you can imagine such a thing. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. Any coconut treeers in chat? Implementing term limits was the worst mistake ever. We could have had another eight years of Obama. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. That probably would have been better. God damn it. Obama would have been like the, the reigning god emperor of, of the Democratic Party for another century. Uh, you know, Kamala isn't that old. I'm not sure it's an age. No, it's not an age thing. I don't know why Kamala Harris is like this. I don't know why Kamala Harris is, is so uncharismatic now. I don't know what happened. Do you think she just grew complacent when she became VP? I... I don't know. Somebody in chat kept asking, you all can't see, of course, unless you're in VGG. Somebody in chat kept asking, is there any evidence we have of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris working well together? And I think by that they mean, like, we have so many videos and photos and bits of evidence from Obama's presidency that he and Joe Biden actually got along pretty well. Like, they actually were pretty friendly with each other. So how much evidence do we have of there being, like, a sincerely good relationship between Kamala Harris and, and, and Joe Biden? And there might be some, but none is coming to mind, really. I, I, I haven't really gotten a big... I haven't really gotten the impression that the dynamic is good. What does Kamala even do? Oh, what do vice presidents ever do? There's this from three years ago. Hi. Hey. Good morning. Hi. What I remember from the campaign trail is uh, even with a supportive family, it can still be grueling. You got any, any tricks of the trade? Uh, working, I work out every morning, regardless of how much sleep I've had. It, um, it's just the best way to start the day. For months, I couldn't find weights to order weights. They were sold out, so I had these liter water bottles that I filled, of course, with water and used. Them. Even here, she do- This is three years ago. Even here, she doesn't sound very good. I feel. Maybe compared to Obama, because Obama is very charismatic. There's like them as hand waves. Well, that's that's resourceful. <laughs> there were times where I was like in a little Iowa town, and that the only treadmill was in the back of a beauty salon. You know, and I'd be walking right. by. And... <laughs> All right, never mind. I can't handle this. Never mind. I can't do. I can't. Do, I can't do that. I'm trying to look at like. Um, Barack Obama's approval ratings. Throughout his presidency, I'm trying to like compare like numbers here because I'm pretty sure that um, Barack Obama, even at the end of his second term, was a lot more popular than Joe Biden is now. Yeah, it looks like at the end of his presidency, Barack Obama had an above 50% approval rating, which right now Joe Biden is at like, what, 35? Yeesh. If Biden did end up dropping out at this point, what would happen? 
okay, I don't know if that's going to happen, you know, and I don't want to like make any crazy predictions because something like that would be like essentially unprecedented. It would be a very unlikely outcome. However, if he was to drop out, I think it would play out like this. I think that the DNC understands that Joe Biden's age is a liability. They've mostly not had him drop out of his own accord or, or not run for re-election of his own accord and have somebody else step up to the plate uh, due to complacency and arrogance. And I think that if his age ever became such a liability that they needed to do something about it, the deal would be, the agreement would be, Joe Biden would either sincerely have or feign an injury only semi-related to his age. Uh, by feign, I don't mean entirely fake. I mean that they would have something and they would use that as the excuse, right? Um, they wouldn't want to use a pretext that legitimizes the idea that he was too old to run because that makes the DNC look bad in retrospect. They would go with something like, I don't know, use the classic, right? Maybe he takes a, a tumble or a bruise or whatever and he, you know, and then he would make like a gracious speech of like, you know, oh, as much fun as I've had being you know, your president, I was going to look forward to beating Trump. You know, I don't think that da, da, da. I leave it to Kamala Harris and then Kamala Harris would take the lead and presumably, you know, we'd, we'd run with that. Now, would that happen? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. If he was to drop out, that feels to me the way that they would do it, you know? That would be my guess. Um, I think. Maybe. Was Jimmy Carter a one- or two-term guy? It was one term. We could get Jimmy Carter back, you know? Uh, oust Biden because he's too old and replace him with a young whippersnapper like Jimmy Carter. Kamala can't win, though? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Here, two weeks ago... Kamala Harris had an exclusive interview with CNN. This is probably the best, um, this is probably the best look we're going to get into her, I guess, modern demeanor. That you have not already done now. Well, to get there, we're going to require everyone to vote to understand what's at stake right now. And yes, I like her jacket. It's a bit oversized, though. I, I don't know why it's that big. The shoulders are clearly too large. I do like the material, though. And, um, and that is no small matter mm -hmm. to make sure that um, we are present. And I intend to travel around our country to remind people of what's at stake and that their voice will matter and will be expressed through their vote in many other ways. Might have shoulder pads. But we have to first... There are shoulder pads. And in addition to that, the jacket is too large. Look, you can see the fabric up here isn't even touching against her arm. Um, the, the, there's, it, there's just too much room. It needs to be brought in. Get there. So I want to emphasize that point. Um, in terms of a second term, there's a lot of work to continue to, to do to build on our successes. We have, for example, capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month for our seniors. Uh, for years, our seniors have been talking about the fact that they had to make the awful decision about whether they could either fill their prescription or fill their refrigerator. But we with finally respect, capped excuse me, with respect yeah. to abortion in particular, I know this is a very big, important issue right now, and voters have been looking at it in previous elections as a time to turn out. It's something you're very passionate about in terms of freedom and choice. Okay, with respect sure, to that no, yeah, issue, sure, we can talk about choice. Yeah, with yeah. respect to that issue in yeah. particular, what could not have been done during the first term that you require a second to accomplish? Good so, question. So the first thing that has to happen on the issue of abortion and choice and, and freedom for reproductive care is that we need to, in the next 10 months, do everything we can to remind people that the court, the Supreme Court, took a constitutional mm -hmm. right from the people of America, from the women of America, and the United States Congress has the power and ability to put that right back in place, to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade into law. Can Congress do it without having necessary votes on well, either side? Well, again, we are here in January, yeah. and I'm going to tell you, in these intervening months between now and the election, I am going to do exactly what I'm doing here in Wisconsin, which is traveling the country to remind people of not only what is at stake and the harm that is occurring every day, so many women. This is so painful to listen to, man, especially on a layup of a talking point like this. The argument from her side is really simple. Roe v. Wade's revocation uh, has led to the removal of the rights of over of, of hundreds of millions of Americans. And the in, in and this is because 
we have a Supreme Court that is overwhelmingly conservative with judges that were picked by Donald Trump. We need to win because we can't get federal legislation passed to ensure that right to access to an abortion unless we have both the legislature and the presidency keeping in mind the needs of the people and protecting their constitutional rights. And the Republicans won't do that. It's that simple. It's now, I don't know how genuine that'll be because there have been opportunities in the past to make federal legislation, uh, which protects the right to an abortion. So this, you know, whether or not there's a real willingness to commit to that, or if the DNC just wants to continue to milk, uh, the revocation of Roe v. Wade for donations in my emails, you know, I can't really say, but that's how you would address it. What's stopping the Dems right now? The Dems don't have the house. Also, they hate you. Why are they conducting a VP interview at a Home Depot? I don't know. It's not a Home Depot. They're just in a warehouse or something. It looks like a supply, uh, the, you know, like a loading dock. If they hate me, why should I hope, uh, uh, vote for them, though? Because the other side hates you way more, Esmelia, trust me. Way, 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 way more. Look, it's uh, the math stays clear. No matter how bad the Dems are, as long as they're better than the Republicans, it's better to have them in office, you know? Um, all the problems that we have with lesser, lesser than thou, or sorry, lesser evil voting um, will persist if the worse evil gets in too, you know? That doesn't necessarily fix the issue. Silently suffering, but also remind them that the is their vote and an outcome that puts back in place the protections of Roe. So these months are going to matter. And as I have said on this issue, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government should not be telling women what to do with their bodies. And realistically, in the over a year that has passed since the Dobbs decision came down, women are silently suffering. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Megan, who was in the auditorium when I you was- You know what else would be really nice? It would be nice if for once a liberal leader could laugh about how bad the GOP is, the way Trump does all the time. Trump will always do this. Do the, ah, the Democrats, they're, ah, they, they don't know what they're doing, you know. But Kamala Harris could easily say, you know, the Democrats have overperformed recently in, in the 2022 midterms, especially. I don't think the Republicans understand how much damage they did to themselves by actually revoking Roe v. Wade. The people of America are waking up to how much it actually hurts to have their constitutional rights taken, you know? Husbands are, 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 are looking at their wives not able to get, uh, you know, a, 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 a fetus that is guaranteed to die on birth that might harm the mother as well, seeing them suffer and knowing they can't do anything, you know? Daughters uh, 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 aren't able to get medical help they need after uh, uh, abuse or rape. And everyone knows it's the Republicans' fault. They've done this, you know? But they can't, there's no engagement, you know? It's, it's just dead, dead air. No charisma. Obama did this to Republicans? Yeah, Obama was a lot better about this. Obama had charisma. It's one thing pretty much everyone can agree on with him, yeah. Vosh, as a German, voting for the lesser evil won't solve anything. People voted for Hindenburg, which was the lesser evil versus Hitler, and then he got voted on. Hindenburg gave all of his power to Hitler. Yeah, so, okay, so even in that hypothetical, do you think things would have been better if Hitler had just won outright, therefore giving, therefore giving him, like, the immediate mandate of the public will rather than him having to have been appointed? Like, even in, even if we reduce this down to, the, like, the lowest common denominator, if, but what if Hitler, you know, even if we reduce it all the way down, there's still no benefit, you know? Uh, I also don't think that the modern Dems are quite at Hindenburg levels personally. You know, maybe that's a bit naive of me. I, I think there's uh, a, a, a little more on the ground there. But again, it's just, um, it, it just doesn't track. But anyway. Hypothetical, Hindenburg did appoint Hitler as chancellor. Yes, in Germany. It's modern day America. So the hypothetical there would be the premise that that behavior would repeat itself today. In either case, it's not as though that situation would be improved if Hitler just won the popular vote. It's just, it's not, you, you, you want, you, you don't want Trump to win, guys. We don't need to relitigate this, okay? We don't want Trump to win. That'd be bad. Speaking, who wanted to have a child wanted to follow through with her pregnancy, but was diagnosed with a fetal mm. condition such that, that she had to have an abortion 
but her doctor could not provide what he knew she needed for the best interest of her health care. She had to travel to Minnesota. He couldn't even secure, I think you said, two signatures from Correct. physicians At to try to get others to say he could provide it in her home state. Because under the law in Wisconsin at that time, he could not, as her physician, make the decision without having two other physicians sign on. In mm. states like Texas, they've passed laws that include providing for up to, to life in prison for health care providers for doing their job of providing health care as they deem appropriate and necessary. There are states that have passed and, or proposed laws, both passed and proposed laws, that make no exception even for rape and incest, which means after someone has survived a, a crime of a violation to their body, mm. a crime of, of violence to their body, these extremists are saying to that survivor, and you don't have the authority to make a decision. Guys, I don't know if Kamala Harris would be able to beat Trump. I don't know. I really want to come across. I really want to come away with this with some kind of um, with some with some kind of like, yeah. Hmm. I guess at this point, the main hope, like the main, the main line forward, the main thing that we're hoping for here, is that Donald Trump has a stroke. You know, I, that's that's got to be like the main line, right? That's that's the hope. That's what we all have to put our collective thoughts and prayers into. This interviewer offers no pushback. It's, I'm not looking for pushback. I would just want to see evidence of Kamala Harris demonstrating what I would call like presidential character. You know, any kind of initiative or or energy or charisma, um, anything that sounds inspiring. That's the job, by the way, of the president. They're the head of state. Their first job, their, the primary thing they have to do is be a center of the government in a, in a communicative sense. They have to be the person who relays the information, the representative of the government and, and of America abroad. You know, if you're not charismatic, you can't do that job. It's, it's, it's not a job for like, you know, pencil pushing policy wonks. There are plenty of other jobs in the administrative state uh, that afford you those opportunities. Does Kamala have to be the VP second term? Uh, yes. Replacing her would cause so much disruption that it would probably be more harm than good. ...about what happens to your body next. It's immoral. When you, when you were a prosecutor, this mm -hmm. was an extraordinary focus. Crimes yes. against women, and children. violence against and children. Yeah. I know you've been very passionate about this for a very long time yes. in a variety of different fields. Yes. But I do wonder, when you talk about the states in particular, mm -hmm. You hold Trump responsible for the, the nomination of three Supreme Court justices who you believe intended at all times to then overturn this important precedent, as you say. 51 years later, here we are with it now being in past tense. If it's a state-related issue, is the election or candidacy and campaign of Trump as important? Well, let's first be clear that the previous president expressed his intentions quite clearly and and fast forward to just recently mm -hmm. says he's proud of what he did and let's be clear so by inference he is proud that women have been deprived of fundamental freedoms to make decisions this interviewer is doing really good not gonna lie does it not feel a bit weird that this journalist who is interviewing her is clearly much more pointed and charismatic and likable just off of like vibes alone than Kamala Harris is like, isn't that really weird on its own? I mean, you you have two people in the room. Two, you, one of them is respectfully, like in comparison at least, a nobody with media training. Admittedly, the other is the vice president of the United States of America. No presence, no like charisma, nothing. You know, you can go back and hear about like historical records, the ways that um. Uh, the presidents and vice presidents, I guess, have acted in the past. And the impression that I've gotten is that, uh, for the most part, it's it's generally expected that people in this position have a kind of gravitas behind them, right? They are some of the most powerful people on Earth. Uh, it makes sense that that would carry in their behavior. Kamala Harris just has none. At least Joe Biden has a lot of Joe Biden's perceived legitimacy comes across because he's an ancient white guy. It's possible that if he wasn't an ancient white guy, he would be even less, um, I don't know, f like projecting gravitas or whatever. But he barely has any now. So about their own body. By inference, proud that doctors are being penalized and criminalized 
She honestly sounds like an unimportant nobody. She doesn't have a good presence. It's like she's apologizing for being there. Exactly, yeah. It it almost feels like by just her, her body language, she is apologizing for being here. I agree completely. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. She, she doesn't take command of the room at all. She just seems like she's there, you know? For providing health care. Proud that women are silently suffering because they don't have access to the health care they need. So let's understand that the stakes are so very high. And mm -hmm. listen, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden has been very clear. When Congress puts the protections of Roe back into the law, he will sign it. Similarly, President Joe Biden has been very clear. If these extremists get achieve their other goal, which is to have a national ban, which means state by state by state, Joe Biden will veto that. The stakes are high. Speaking of the stakes being quite high, let's go to the border because yeah. this is something that is in your... This is also something that Democrats never do. Democrats never point to the silent majority argument. Tr Republicans will say the most like flagrantly incorrect shit. They'll just be like, the American people are tired of immigrants. No, they're not. Any polling data that you look at indicates that, like, the average American doesn't think all immigrants are bad. Like, whatever what you want to look at. But Republicans will always gesture at their power and weight. Democrats do the opposite. Listen to the way she talks. Listen to how fucking meek she is. It's the stakes are really high, you know? I know that, like, two-thirds of Americans at least defend uh, Roe v. Wade and think that the right to an abortion should be preserved, but I'm not going to bring that up. I, I'm not going to bring up any, uh, you know, anything that would make it seem like I have the cultural power to do what I want because, you know, that would get in the way of letting Republicans dictate the terms of the conversation constantly, you know? You understand what I'm talking about, right? You just, how, how like, spineless and, and meek she sounds when this is an issue where she's ideologically in the supermajority, right? Like, hold on. Um... America polling on right to abortion. Most in U.S. agree on allowing abortions in the first six weeks. This is bullshit, by the way. Six weeks is not enough time, but this is just like a baseline because Republicans want a full abortion ban. 73% of U.S. adults, 73% of U.S. adults, 56% of Republicans oppose a total abortion ban. And even with this overwhelming majority of public support, three quarters of the country kamala harris is still like eh, the stakes are really high we, we need to be there to veto any of these bills you know like what the fuck They're, like where's the confidence where where's the aggression where's the standing there saying yeah republicans are digging themselves in a hole america has made it clear they want to preserve this right why <sighs> Direct wheelhouse. It has been something that you have been looked to to try to accomplish what has been, frankly, a decades long endeavor by successive presidential administrations. But there is anger on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans, about an unsustainable border, what they're calling a crisis. Why can't this be accomplished during this administration? Well, so there is no question that our immigration system is broken. And so much so that we, as the first bill that we offered after our inauguration was to fix the immigration system, which included what we must do to create a pathway for citizenship mm -hmm. and to put the resources that are needed into the border. But sadly, people on the other side of the aisle have been playing politics with Pathetic. This people on the other side of the aisle have been playing politics. Bro, they want to do an insurrection. Um, unfortunately, some mean no-gooders have other ideas. Bro, January 6th happened. Are you f***ing kidding me? The, they're playing politics about... <sighs> ...this issue. The solutions are at hand. And, you know, gone are the days, sadly, where a President Bush or John McCain understood that we should have a bipartisan approach why aren't they like the neocons why are they uh, we knew how to deal with the neocons because we agreed with them on 95 percent of issues mm, uh, what what why are they different now why have they been fascists for the past decade that's different to fixing this problem, we need a good republican party it's different but what are those solutions 
The solution includes putting resources at the border to do what we can to process people effectively and putting in place laws that actually allow for a meaningful, meaningful pathway to citizenship. And yet there's progressives who are very angry about, progress, about dreamers, about a pathway to citizenship not being included in the latest negotiations on these issues. Why well, I, I won't gone. speak to the current negotiations and the status of the current no negotiations, but I will tell you that dreamers under, sadly, the, some of the draconian approaches to them have been treated very badly. Mm -hmm. What and draconian approaches? Who? Why can't, why can't you name the party doing the bad things? What, what, what's why? What, do you think there's like a rule? that prevents you from saying the policies that you're referring to are Trump era policies for the most part. And that we have to understand who our dreamers are. First of all, in the height of the pandemic, it was so many dreamers who are frontline workers it's true. and working on saving lives. Um, dreamers who many of them before they could walk or talk were brought into the country and, and have lived very productive lives, serving in our military, serving in Fortune 500 companies. And they should be honored for the, 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 the contribution they are making, and they should be protected. You've cared about this issue even before you were the vice president. Absolutely. It's, it's very dear to your heart. Yes. And yet you look at and it, yet. this is not something that can be accomplished now in this administration. I don't know how many bites of the apple you think you'll be able to get. Have you given that some thought? I will tell you that the negotiations that are happening right now, I hope, are going to be directed at solutions that are genuinely focused on fixing the problem, including all the equities that you mentioned. I do wonder about something that, obviously, you are really well known for. I mean, you are somebody who, aside from being... She never talks concretely about what she wants to do. I can't do it. No, she just whines. She just sit, she with no charisma or direction. She just sit, she stands there and she psychologically she's sitting um, because you need a spine to stand. Uh, she just she just stands there and she just complains, you know, um, people. There are people who want bad things and we need to be there because we don't want to we don't want bad things. Um, you know, we need to think about the people, you know, just nobody gets moved by this. Liberals don't either, by the way. Don't, don't let anyone delude you into thinking that rhetoric like this works with liberals. All of the data we have indicates that it doesn't. Stuff like, liberals are going to vote for the Dems just pretty much as a matter of course, um, mostly out of fear of Trump, it seems, based on how uh, Biden won back in 2020. But this alienates independence. Nobody who is so disillusioned with the American political process that they would be an independent or wouldn't vote at all is going to watch this spineless spineless fish flopping this nothing um and go like wow you're right i need to vote for the dems no nobody is swayed by this it is objectively ineffective vice president you have run a department of justice that's second only in the united states department of justice uh, in size yeah and thank you cnn mm -hmm. um we remember you very well from your senate and all the work you're doing on the different committees mm -hmm. and making your voice heard and yet there is someone right now, if the polling is correct, has 91 counts, four different jurisdictions with different indictments and different case, cases against him, who could very well be the Republican nominee. And yet he is attacking you and President Biden for election interference. He believes what, what the, the Justice Department is doing is only attributed to you, but also is election interference. What is your reaction to those who believe his statements? Okay, well, let's start with the facts. You just outlined them, mm -hmm. so actually I don't need to repeat them um, in terms of what has have been the allegations about the former president. And I do believe... This is ridiculous, dude! Why are you not taking the opportunity to gloat? Why? What? what it's, it's, it's the politics of failure. It's incredible. This is the most obvious slam. Yeah, like, hey, your opponent has committed 50 billion crimes. Look at her. She's, yeah, she's looking at the ground. She won't even say his name. She's like looking at, oh, oh, I won't even speak on those dastardly deeds from that individual. Dude. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If Donald Trump wins, you know, the DNC is at fault. 
Obviously, like the Republicans lied and broke every rule on the way and they're monstrous people, but the Democrats had so much power and so much uh, 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 of a legitimate claim to meaningfully opposing that. And this is what we got. It's insane. Again, like there's past a point, like the incompetence is willful, right? Past a point, the the abstaniousness is willful. It's ridiculous. If that the American people care about rule of law and care about speaking truth and acknowledging truth. I do believe in my travels around our country that, for example, a statement that suggests that insurrectionists who attacked our capital and, and committed acts of violence do you think should he's not be Voldemort? called patriots, as the former president has done. Um, should they be called candidates? Well, the people who attacked on January 6th should not be called patriots. That what they did is they attacked our capital, they committed acts of violence, and they need to be taken into account and held accountable for those acts. So these are just facts, and um, we are going to see what happens in terms of any cases that are being litigated in a court. People are repulsed by forceful, opinionated women. I don't think anyone likes this. I don't, like, if you, you can actually take a look at how little interest there is in Kamala Harris. Um exclusive full exclusive interview with cnn 54k views while i was looking for some modern stuff to look at i saw another like somebody got her on for some kind of like interview it was like a non-news station i think and it had like twenty six thousand views nobody gives a f about kamala harris nobody gives a shit about her dislike ratio yeah every time she opens her mouth a new trump voter gets their wings yeah Like Joe Biden was more of a, 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 a more prominent force in the Biden administration than Kamala Harris, or sorry, in the uh, Obama administration than Kamala Harris is under Biden's. I feel like Michelle Obama was more of a force under the Obama administration than Kamala Harris is under Biden's. Law. But what about the accusation that you, people that cared it is way, Biden way, way, way more about Michelle Obama than they do about Kamala Harris? DOJ that is overseeing any of the charges against him. Well, listen, everyone who is paying close attention understands that there is a clear and, and, and non-negotiable division in terms of the separation between our administration and what the Department of Justice does in terms of its investigations, in terms of its prosecutions. And that line has never been crossed. Did that also intend and include what's going on in Georgia? Obviously, you were a state prosecutor. This is the federal government we're talking about, but... I think it's sexism. If she were more forceful and aggressive, people would call her a bitch. But people call her a bitch anyway. I, I think that that's a consideration, but you have to be reasonable with it, too. Like, I think a good example of this is that it's very obvious that Barack Obama code-switched like f because he knew that if he ever slipped into, like, AAVE... As the president, he would be subjected to a lot of racism. So for that reason, he became the most charismatic president ever. And what did the Republican Party do? Be really racist anyway. And once Obama realized, I guess, that there was like a line he could play and passed a point, there was no longer any, um, like, like there was no amount that he could lean off that that would prevent racism from being an issue. He made jokes about it. Right? Like, um, remember when he made that CPT colored people time joke at the uh, White House uh, correspondence dinner when, when he gave the speech? Like, Obama, like, leaned more into jokes on the subject as time went on. Uh, I think because he realized that being confident with it came across a lot better to everybody than him seeming like he was trying to placate the anxieties of people who are going to be racist anyway. Does that make sense? Like... Kamala Harris shouldn't, like, n nobody likes this, you know? Yes, yes, and of course for his second term, he, he also didn't have to worry about re-election, but he was still relatively popular at the end of his second term, you know? There are those who try to conflate what DA Fannie Willis do is doing in Georgia with the acts of the Department of Justice. What's the question? The question is, do you believe that when Donald Trump is making these statements to suggest this is all attributed to the Biden administration or to the Department of Justice, what is your response to people who believe that, in fact, it's all orchestrated as one? Well, what he is saying is not factual, period. Period. And th that would not be new for him, would it? <laughs>
Well, I wonder when you look at the rule of law, as you've mentioned, and I do think the American public is very well in tune with discussions surrounding who is above the law and who is not. These phrases come out very easily now. It's almost like the Miranda warnings people are able to recite. When you hear that, Michelle Obama for president. She's charismatic. So I, I think that Michelle Obama would make a good presidential candidate just based on her reputation, though I don't know if she's been sort of put to the fire the way that a presidential candidate has been or would have to be. It's It seems pretty clear that like the next person who's being uh, brought up for Democrat presidency is probably um, uh, 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 Gavin Newsom, right? That, that seems like the most likely thing that's coming up, I guess. What about Buttigieg? Excuse me. Uh, no. Buttigieg has completely wasted his time as, um, uh, 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 you know, Secretary of Transportation. He's f***ed it up. It, it pretty much ended with the disaster in East Palestine, Ohio, where you have, like, this easy layup to be a take charge kind of we're going to fix this up kind of thing. And then he does an interview where he's like, yeah, actually train derailments happen all the time. Not that big. Okay. Like that was, that was it. That was, that was the end of it. You know, that was his chance to be what? Oh, did you not see that? Hold on one second. It's like a very specific clip. I can't find it. Somebody in chat would have to find it. Sorry. I do like that. Newsom isn't afraid to be aggressive and call them. Yeah. Newsom's aggressive and charismatic. Um, and he looks like a president, by which I mean he looks like a white male politician, <laughs> you know, uh, like he 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 will he kowtows to those biases at the very least. Uh, he's also a disingenuous snake. So, you know, I can hate that guy. What about Gretchen Whitmer? I'd like Gretchen Whitmer. Yeah, that'd be nice. Juxtapose that to the issue of immunity, possibly whether a president should have absolute immunity. Do you think people believe that it's appropriate for a president to have immunity. I think we're going to have to leave that to the lawyers who are handling the cases. Really? Some would say it's Really? You can't you can't even offer a no one is above the law like the most easy layup like Magna Carta era. Really? Come on. Up to the voters to look at issues of who can be on the ballots as well and places like Colorado or Maine. Are you comfortable leaving that up to the courts or to the voters? Those cases are all being litigated and I'll watch as they go through their process. When you look ahead and you see what is coming down the road, particularly, you know, the next time of the calendar date mm -hmm. is January 6th. Madam Vice President, the last time we saw an election year, presidential election year of a vice president overseeing certification of the election, we saw what transpired. This is like in Disco Elysium where you fail a check and you have to suffer through all the bad dialogue options. Yeah, di Kamala Harris is just a Disco Elysium character who's currently having that thought that makes you critically fail all uh, checks. And every time she says anything to anyone, you're just like watching in horror as, um, as uh, you know, Kamala Dubois uh, f***s up every single possible <laughs> social engagement. With our eyes. There is concern that many actually believe that we do not have free and fair elections in this country. Do you have concerns about how to approach the certification process again on January 6th? Jesus, her not answers are worse than Hillary's. I, I do genuinely think that in some ways she is actually more of a charisma black hole than, than Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is a lot more hateable for many reasons, but Hillary Clinton also is uh, energetic and makes points right she doesn't have this like drunken swaggering disengagement from everything that's happening she doesn't come across anywhere near this spineless if there's one thing you can't accuse um uh hillary clinton of it's it's of not uh you know it's it's of like not being uh combative right like hillary at least yeah makes you feel something she she swaying not swaggering yeah don't swaggering and swaying mean the same thing don't they both mean kind of like uh lopsided walking or is there a different implication nah oh, okay no white boy all right gotcha thank you swagger means confidence yeah i know swagger means confidence but swaggering does swaggering mean like confidently walking then okay okay yeah i think everyone is right you're thinking of staggering i might be yeah to be vigilant in demanding that we maintain our democracy
and we uphold its pillars. He downplaying the derailment. Oh yes, please. Yeah, look, I'm I'm here focused on East Palestine, but uh, there have been a number of uh, of incidents, derailments, and, and crashes that, that need attention. And uh, and it gives you a, if you look at the statistics, you get a sense of what we're up against. And specifically with Norfolk Southern, uh, they need to think. I think uh, lead the way in going above and beyond, especially after what happened here. They should have been doing it anyway. My dude, you are the Secretary of Transportation. <laughs> Yeah, it was like you you ha this is the East Palestine derailment was the most broadly recognized train derailment in recent American history and he could have turned this into like he could have been like a go-getter over this where it's like yeah, we've been letting Norfolk Southern get away with way too much for way too long. I am calling on Congress to implement these laws and regulations to blah 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 blah, blah right? But instead like he had a, he had a he had a press conference, you know, and it was like, yeah, you know, this happens all the time. It's pretty bad. Haha. Haha. <laughs> -ha. And some of their remediation responsibilities, obviously, is more on the EPA side, and I'd have to look to them in terms of what they can require. But what we're going to require is that they meet the highest standard on safety. Just to follow up on that quickly, yeah. in any of your briefings today, concerning from residents in our community as well as here, is where that contaminated soil may be going. That's right. Any discussion on exactly where that soil may be going? Yeah, one of the things that uh, uh, that I've seen that... Uh, if anyone's interested in learning more about this, by the way, uh, the Well, There's Your Problem podcast has an extensive episode on the East Palestine derailment, uh, which is very interesting, and I highly recommend that you guys check it out in terms of, like, exactly what happened and why it matters and the historical context behind uh, how it went wrong or whatever. Um, I, I, I pretty much, like, to the extent that I can, pretty much all infrastructural news I get from that podcast. They were probably not maintained well for years before you got to this position. Well, there are many, many problems with American Rail. Which includes the integrity of a free and fair election system. And that means addressing, for example, the intimidation that has happened with poll workers. I was recently in Georgia speaking with poll workers who have been the subject of attack or are fearful about volunteering their time in our elections because they feel a sense of civic duty. It's important. The interview is almost done, guys. We have to suffer through all of it. People who do that work and they should not be attacked. It is important that we all remember that a hallmark of a democracy is civic participation, which means let's all vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for, mm -hmm. but please, in the midst of all that you've got going on, take the time to fill out a ballot. If you can vote by mail, then send it in. Sometimes you might have to stand for quite some time in line, but please do. In spite what, a, of what a bold vision. What a confident image of their potential future presidency they have put forward, you know? What a, what a remarkable, the, truly inspiring people who weren't already going to vote to vote. Thank you so much. Again, in states like Georgia, who pass laws that make it illegal to even give you food and water if you're standing in line. Um, but it matters. It matters. And I can't do elections this, man. matter. The voice of the American people matter. And one of the ways that, that we all express our voice is through our vote. Let me ask you one more question. I, it, I'm struck just in your presence. The, I was watching you on stage, watching the reactions from the crowd, mm -hmm. looking you in the eye with your passion that you were displaying and talking about so many issues. And yet you hear candidates suggesting that a vote for President Biden, because of his age, is somehow a vote for you. Oh? And that is hurled as an insult. It's intended to demonstrate some negative viewpoint towards you. What is your reaction to this thought that with your background in particular, with your career, that there is some thought that you are incapable? Uh... Well, I, I think that, um... Most women who have risen in their profession, yep. who are leaders in their profession, have had similar experiences. Mm. Um, I was the first woman to be elected district attorney. I was the first woman to be elected attorney general of the state of California. And I'm the first woman to be vice president. And I love my job. <laughs> okay.
Guys, I'm really sorry. I wanted to come away with this with some kind of like hopium for the future, but I think that Kamala Harris is actually a worse candidate than Joe Biden, even in Joe Biden's like final form dementia mode. You know what I mean? I think even like, e even now, oh man. So yeah, I guess we're just hoping for Donald Trump and the stroke. What's the opposite of hopium, Bosch? Doomium? I don't know. Well, copium is the opposite of hopium, but copium would suggest that we're like, deluding ourselves, you know, in believing there's a brighter future. We're accepting that, in fact, existence is suffering. There is no brighter future. We were put here to suffer, and suffer we will. Doomium sounds metal as fuck, yeah. That's actually how uh, Doom Guy heals so in, the, in the health pickups. 